Hello, and thank you for joining us for this special New Year's message. Of course, this is on New Year's Eve, but we thank you for joining us tonight because we want you to know that God has a perfect plan for his people. We should never be discouraged. We should never feel that we're defeated or that the enemy has the upper hand. Yes, we will have battles, but God has promised us great victory through his son, Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to introduce to our Crossroad membership and those who share with us online, I want to share with you our theme for 2022. And I'm sharing that tonight by giving you this message from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And our message for tonight, as well as our theme for 2022, is discovering the riches of God in Christ Jesus. Discovering the riches of God in Christ Jesus. Now, what a wonderful thing that God has included us in his plan. There are a lot of people that think about riches, and they normally think about the accumulation of wealth, or they think about how can I get more money. As a matter of fact, this has breeded many schemes and plans that man has made in order to get money. But this verse tells us certain things that we need to think about if we're going to discover the riches of God in Christ Jesus. We need to first recognize that God has a wonderful kingdom. God has a wonderful and amazing kingdom. His kingdom does not lack anything. And my prayer and my thought for you is that you would not lack anything in Christ. All that God has given you, he has placed it in Christ Jesus. And so, therefore, we have this admonition, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Now, first of all, we've got to look at the problems. Why is it that we're not seeking God? Three problems seem to emerge, and the first one has to deal with our definition of what we might call riches, which is really stuff, the accumulation of things. The Bible warns us that man's life or our substance does not consist of the accumulation of things, but rather in your relationship with God. A lot of people saying, well, I need to get more, and I need to do this. My plans are this in the new year, and I'm going to get this. Well, you need to be warned if God wills because you getting all those things or planning all those things does not mean or does not guarantee that God is going to extend your life. So that's the first problem. How do we define riches? Now, God does it for us in this verse. It's in the kingdom of God and it's in the righteousness that God teaches us. If you give a person a million dollars and do not give them the right frame of mind to handle that million, of do million dollars, how in the world is he planning to do that? As a matter of fact, the Bible warns us, the Bible tells us specifically that your life does not consist of these things and that what shall it profit a man if he gains the entire world and loses his own soul? So we want to seek first the kingdom of God. The second problem we run into is the problem of priorities in life. We don't set the right priorities. We give great value to things and substance, but how are we giving great value to God's kingdom? Now, think of it in these terms. Where will you spend most of your time? Will you spend your time these few years that we have on this planet, or are you planning on spending eternity with God. Now, if you're planning on spending eternity with God, then we need to set some new priorities. And that's ver that verse tells us, seek first. That word first means to prioritize it. And when we prioritize it, we are giving God's kingdom value in our lives. After all, you're saved not to join a building, but to join God in his kingdom. God places you in Christ, beloved, and he causes you to grow in him and learn of his ways. We need to set priorities. I've seen people make these great mistakes in life, and it all boils down to the fact that they did not set some kingdom priorities. The Bible tells us, seek first, not last, not second, not somewhere, but seek first the kingdom of God, which means seek God. Seek him 
and the riches of his love and grace. The third thing that we do is that we have a problem or a lack of understanding of God's process. Generally, when people want the blessings of God or they say, I have the riches of God, they want it right now. They want it lump, what we call a lump sum distribution. God's kingdom doesn't work that way. It's generally a process of time. God carried the man by the name of Abraham through a process. He brought him into the land, and then God taught him how to walk by faith. As he worshiped God, the Lord provided for his need. But guess what? Abraham was not concerned, as concerned about his territory as he was about his God. He wasn't concerned about the real estate and all of the things that he would have and say, look at what I have. He was concerned about his relationship with God. In the book of Hebrews, it said that he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. What a great testimony. The same is true for Isaac, and the same came true for Jacob as they sought the living God in their lives, and God provided for every one of their needs. So here's how it boils down. First of all, seek God and you will find life. Notice part A of that verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's the divine imperative. That's the thing that you and I have got to come to grips with in our life. If you grab hold of God's kingdom, God will grab hold of you. Now, in that process, here's what's going to happen. It's going to generally define what these things are that you actually need in your life. Now, I know you're probably thinking, like I would think sometimes, well, it's going to be silver, it's going to be gold, it's going to be assets, it's going to be property. No, 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 no. God has things called love, grace, mercy, goodness that are far greater, far powerful than any of these other things could ever be. Now, does God want you to not have those things? No, that's not what the verse says. The verse says if you set the right priorities, if you seek first God's kingdom, you're going to find everything that you need mainly in your relationship with God. And I should say, period, in your relationship with God. Because the Lord is your maker. He is your creator. He made you so automatically he knows what you need. The second thing about this verse is that if you get God, you get everything. Jesus said, get God and you got it all. Now, I know that's my paraphrased version of it, but listen to the verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, all these things shall be added unto you. What a wonderful God we serve. And our goal this year, what we want to do is to discover the riches of God in Christ Jesus. We want to discover what it is that God has for our life, not just the things that he's going to add, but what's his divine plan? How is he going to move in my life that I might be a blessing as well as receive a blessing? One of the messages that I plan to bring sometime in January is that you can get rich, but you've got to do it God's way. So getting rich, you've got to do it God's way. If you do it God's way, you will be rich in the things, even though not measured by the things of this world, but it will be God working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So if you've got God, you've got it all. I want to close by giving you several things that we need to do in seeking God. Number one is prayer. Prayer is not just you getting on your knees and giving God a set of petitions and giving God a list of what you'd like to see happen in your life, prayer is communion with God. It is fellowship with God. It is speaking with God. Well, when the people were in the Old Testament, they didn't know how to speak with God because they thought that God was this God who thundered on Mount Sinai. They thought that he was a God that would harm them. And even in the Old Testament, we find that when one of his prophets... One of his prophets went out to seek God and to find out what God would do in his life. Elijah found out that God was not in the earthquake. God was not in the fire. God was not in the 
the terrible storm or the wind that came upon that mountain. But then afterward, he heard a still, small, gentle voice speaking to him. That's the God that we have in the New Testament. He came to us in a manger. And the wonderful thing about is he will come to you in your heart. He will be your Savior and he will be your Lord. So pray to him. Make your request known. Pray to God, adore him, and learn more about his ways, which brings us to the second thing that we need to do if we're going to seek God. Read the Bible. Don't just read it to say, well, I finished up a certain chapter, or I finished up a certain book, or I read through the New Testament or Old Testament. Read the book as if you were learning about God. And here's what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit will guide you in that search. Why? Because if you're saved, if you're in Christ, the Holy Spirit wants you to know what's in this Bible, but more importantly, he wants you to know God. And we have God in us teaching us what God is all about. How good is that? It can't get any better. That's why we need to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. The third thing that we do is we worship, join together with other believers. If you might be joining online or you might be joining, as in our case, in the parking lot or some enter into the building, but however you can do it, it might be with someone over the phone. Join with, with them in worship and express your love for God. Why? That encourages us all. And I want to bring up another concept that we're going to share in this coming year is the fact that there's no, no such thing as individual riches. We share in this thing called Christ in us. We share in his kingdom. It's not about your self-ownership, but God owning you. God possessing your heart and leading you in the right path. And then finally, we seek God by serving others. So we pray, we read our Bible, we worship, but then we serve others. Now, how does that help us to seek God? That's where these things are added. Because as you go out to serve, the Lord gives you things that they might be a testimony, that they might be a resource to you in order to reach out to other people. What a wonderful Savior we have. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the coming year. I'm looking forward to seeking God and discovering the riches of God in Christ Jesus. That's our theme. Let it be our plan. Let's co close with prayer. Father, thank you for blessing us to reach this point, to be at the end of the close of this year of 2021. Some people will say it's been a bad year. I'm going to say, Lord, it was a good year because you kept us. So we thank you. We ask that you would guide us in the coming year. Help us to not be anxious, but to always be thankful. Bless us that we might continue in your service. We humbly ask in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you, my friend. I look forward to to seeing you in worship as we look forward to 2022. Remember, we are discovering the riches of God in Christ Jesus. God bless you. This is Pastor William Coleman, and I wish you a good year.